Um, I'm going to go ahead and introduce now our second speaker. Uh, he, he, his name is John Seville. Um, you know, he's the CEO and founder of Acorn Wealth Corporation. Um, AWC is one of the leading stock trading ac uh, academies in North America that have over the last seven years worked with thousands of investors to help educate, train, and mentor uh, individuals on how to effectively manage their own money. Uh, John, along with his team, they spent the last 11 years mastering the art of technical analysis as a method of fighting trading opportunities in North America equity markets using some unique uh, techniques. Now, using such techniques, John and the other senior traders at AWC were able to identify exit points on the market prior to major breakdowns such as that in 2008 and the months preceding the European Union crisis. So without further ado, um, he's now here. I'm going to introduce Mr. John Seville. Terrific. Okay, yeah, thanks a lot, Joseph, and, uh, and everyone over at MTI. Uh, when uh, Joseph asked me to, uh, Mr. Keith had asked me uh, a few weeks ago if we'd be interested in looking at uh, doing future market predictions, uh, I was extremely excited and honored to be a part of the event. Uh, what I was even more excited about was when I saw the date of the event. Um, today is an extremely important day when it comes to um, predicting future market movements. And um, this is actually, today we're going to be talking about smart money and how to predict where the smart money is going. But this will actually also be the first ever free webinar where I've, uh, I'm going to be sharing with you a, a tool that I use uh, and have used now every, uh, every month for the last several years to predict where the major high probability move of where the market will go next. And we'll be talking about that uh, towards the uh, end of today. So um, without, uh, let's get started. Um, a quick disclaimer, of course, you can see on the screen. But uh, real brief introduction to Acorn. Of course, uh, Joseph did a wonderful job of doing that already. But uh, uh, yeah, we started in 2007. We were just a small group of traders at that point. Uh, I had a fundamental background um, uh, um, from my father, who was in a, still is in the geology industry. But I just saw the amounts of movement that would happen on stocks with no change to the fundamentals. Of course, that's why we all got into technicals. Um, what type of traders are you? I'll tell you what type of trader I am. Uh, I'm mostly attracted to the swing trader and the day trader and using options over the top of that. So um, for me, trading uh, shouldn't be like another job. It should be more like a business where you have a strategy that manages your money and you kind of can put those rules in place at midnight if needs be and say, hey, uh, this stock has a high probability of bouncing at $10 and once it does that, it's, it should go up to $10.60 without any real resistance. So there's a 6% trade there, so they'll put a 1% stop beneath it and let it go. And uh, it might not be for another week until that trade comes around, but, uh, or it could be the very next morning, but that's pre-programmed with bracket orders or conditional orders sometimes the night before or week before. That's the type of trading that interests me most, and that's why I'm going to be talking about how to uh, find those areas that uh, high probability buy or short zones so that you can um, try and or potentially uh, explore that area of uh, hands-off trading a little more. Now you can still use it for day trading, but uh, the idea is to be looking for high probability uh, smart money trades and targets so that you can be more mechanical and consistent with your trades. Um, so a quick question, um, it's very relevant. To, uh, to today is how, think about how you make your decisions. Most people, when they sit down in the day and uh, contemplate what they're going to buy or sell, are usually, in my experience from people I've talked to anyway, um, are considering one of these four things. They're looking at uh, the news, they're looking for tips from friends, uh, newsletters, brokers, things they're familiar with. You know, this is a picture of Vancouver, this is where our office is. Uh, but it's, it's, they're constantly changing variables. Um, yeah, we're talking, listening earlier about wandering through Wall Street, you know, that, that, a book that many of us have read, talking about the, uh, the, the uh, chaotic markets. Well, there's also chaos in the way most people make decisions. Um, if if the, the way you find out about a good opportunity is from changing sources, then it's very hard to get strict, measurable um, parts to your strategy. And with that consistency, consistency in how we approach, it's very difficult to get consistency in our results. Uh, and most people then end up uh, making emotional-based decisions, which lead to emotional-based mistakes, 
failed to limit losses, stocks turn around you know, the, the day after we buy them because we're, we're buying at the peak instead of buying at the bottom. But all of this stuff, again, is all the common things that are associated with uh, that type of trading and that's perhaps why most people lose money because it, it's not a, a consistent strategy across every trade that they're doing. And um, uh, that again, emotional mistakes lacking a strategy. What we want to do is we want, and what I want to talk about here is how we can uh, start. Uh, well, so how can we can stop answering emotional questions every day that are subjective? You know, is the market bullish or bearish? Is an impossible question to answer because everyone's going to have a different response. Uh, maybe it's bullish based on the job figures, maybe it's bullish based on what your friend thinks. We need to have quantifiable ways to take out subjective strategies and replace them with uh, objective strategies, things we can measure, things we can re replicate more importantly on every single one of our trades. That's how we get consistency. So um, what's there to distract us is this. This is why most people don't get that because on the best days to buy stocks, this is what the news read. So if all of a sudden emotion kicks in and you, you wait till the next day till it starts going up already and by that time it's too late. So again, coming back to timing, you know, what do you use to time the investment? If we're going to take emotion out, if we're going to say, well, I don't care what the news says, which I don't, um, there's some funny stories about that, uh, but um, <laughs> the if you don't care what the newspapers read, well, then how else do you make your decision? And um, uh, so I would argue that the chart tells you basically everything you need to know, well, most of it anyway. So if you could draw the perfect chart, if you could, if you could impose your will on a stock and say, if the stock looked exactly like this, what would it be? Would it be a double bottom? Would it be a head and shoulders? Would it be, um, would it be a bullish engulfing candle? Uh, what, what, the, what would the indicators be doing? Would you have um, a diverging MACD? Would you have a, a sharp stochastic? What period would those be? Basically, what I'm asking is, what is your recipe for success that is consistent, that you really stick to? Do you have one? Um, most investors don't. And the old adage is, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. So what I'm going to suggest is that we, no matter what your approach is to the market, that we can actually start getting away from those emotional problems by going through a checklist similar to this. So this is the, this is the checklist that I use no matter what strategy I'm following. When I approach the market and I'm looking for future market predictions or stocks to trade, the first question I'm going to ask is, is the stock market bullish or bearish? Now, instead of asking it that way though, what I'm going to ask is, is the market at resistance or support? So once we know that, is it hitting the horizontal support, support or resistance level, or possibly a trend line? The next question then to, uh, to add to that is then, are we hitting that with momentum? And if so, we look for breakouts, or are we hitting it with diverging momentum? In which case, we look for reversals or shorts. So once we've made that decision, we know whether we're in an oscillating or momentum pattern, then we can say, right, all right, we're looking for shorts because we're running into a double top on the S&P 500 and we have uh, less volume, diverging money flow, great, we're going to head down. Okay, so which sector is the most bullish or bearish? And then we can go in, look at each of the sector spiders, XLY, XLE, you, know, you can go to sectorspider.com and find all the different relevant ticker symbols. And then do the same thing. Look at whether those sectors are at resistance or support. And that we can then further channel our scan even further. And uh, we then run the correct correlating scan to find stocks that satisfy those conditions that give the idea backbone. So looking for that, uh, that type of pattern where it's at a resistance point. We can then further confirm this looking for whether smart money is coming into it or not, and I'm going to show you how we do that here in a minute. Uh, is the move confirmed using price action? Do indicators confirm? And is there any special ingredient that gives us an edge? And uh, depending on the strategy, uh, if you're looking for breakouts, 
you may be looking for institutional buying, insider buying, things like that. But basically this, no matter what the strategy, is the checklist that I run, uh, run through for every stock before I buy it when I'm doing my analysis in the evening. So let's take a step back. Let's talk about some, a very basic question before we get into too much detail. Let's ask ourselves uh, a very important question, which is who controls the market in the first place? And uh, the, the, the basic answer, without putting a name to it, is volume. Volume controls the market because volume dictates price. So who dictates the volume? And we probably all know this. Uh, the people who control the volume is a smart money. It's Goldman Sachs, it's JP Morgan, it's Knight Capital, it's, it's the big boys. And uh, the big boys, let's remember, they're not there to help you. The, the stock market is a business. If 95% of traders fail, it's because the other 5% are making that money off of you. The, the stock market is not there to help. It's there to reap rewards and confuse you. And 70 to 80 percent of the trades in the market are all coming from these guys. 70 to 80 percent of the volume that you see each day is coming from a computer sitting around in a room making decisions based on algorithms. So if these are the guys that control the market, these are the guys we want to figure out how they make their decisions. This is the smart money that we want to uh, start tagging along to and what's going to feed into that checklist I mentioned uh, a few slides ago. Why is the smart money so powerful? Well, it's not that they have 80% um, of the money. It's because if they, if they trade $1,000 in and out 100 times, they can represent $200,000 worth of volume. So with small amounts of capital, they can whip the market into a, into a direction and influence where price goes to where they want. And um, when, when you see the power of these forces in events such as the flash crash of May 2010, it just goes to show that one thing going bad within these flash crash, within these algorithms, can send the market down 1,000 points only to go straight back up in a second once it hits a magic kind of smart money level. Now, the reason I talk about the, the presence of the, or, or the power of this smart money algorithms is because uh, it shouldn't scare you, but it might. <laughs> but, um, but the beauty of it is that a computer doesn't think. It, it just follows instruction. That's the only way you could trade $1,000 200,000 times. That's the only way you can have that type of power is if it's a rule system. And it's just doing the same thing again and again, and you can actually reverse engineer it. By, because they, a lot of those rules have the same symptoms. So when we start looking for smart money, the question is, well, um, how does the smart money buy? It buys based on price rules. It buys on because, because the stock is at 10, we're going to execute a purchase. And so therefore, because of this very precise, almost scientific, way that it makes decisions, the general rule that we now move forward with is that when looking at a chart, we, the physics of trading, like, just like gravity in life, the physics of trading is that we assume that a stock will never change direction in our school of thought unless it hits horizontal resistance, trend line resistance, or a moving average. So when I'm looking at a chart, I'm always looking for explaining why a stock has ever changed direction. And I would argue that an algorithm doesn't see this it sees this. It sees levels based on price, and these levels are preset decision points as to whether they buy or sell. And, and the, now this might be something that you're already familiar with. If you are, I apologize. We, we will be getting to more advanced stuff in a second. But for those of you who are just getting introduced to levels, this is so very important because if you just understood where you, could, where you drew the lines on the chart, where these horizontal lines were, you can make money just on that, just looking at support and resistance and, uh, and simply buying as soon as a stock comes down and hits one level and selling before it hits the next. That's what I call the free money. If there's nothing in between, then there's nothing there to stop it. Of course, the trick is then selling as soon as it breaks beneath. Very basic trading strategy. 
you add volume to that and other things, and that's where you start increasing your probability. So that's, the, that's, that's what we want to start with. First, we're assuming that algorithms see levels on price. So flash crash May 2010, there was the level, right there at 1060. Came straight down to it and straight back up to resistance. So the first step is trying to find not just any level. We don't just want to be a novice trader. We want to be a very profitable trader. So we want to find where the highest probability, strongest levels are. So when I look at a chart, let's say I've gone through my checklist and I've just decided that the market is at support. Um, we're coming down to a, a, a strong support zone and we've got, a, uh, we've got volume coming in to the buyers, the institutions are buying, the insiders are buying, the smart money on the S&P is going up. Great. I'm going to run my scan for looking for bullish stocks. And when I get my list of stocks, the first thing I'm going to be looking for is finding a stock, stock that's at a strong smart money zone. And I define a smart money zone as something where the stock has previously shot down, so it's come down maybe 20%, 30%, could be more, and it's hit a level, a, a, a price, where the second it hits it, it goes straight back up again. Because think about that, you get the reverse engineering mindset. A computer buys instantly, because one equals one. Right? So uh, it doesn't take three weeks to think about it. It buys because the decision is based on the rules. So when a computer buys, and that's what we're trying to track, we get aggressive, reactive bounces versus people buying, which looks more like that. So I would never buy a stock like that using a smart money strategy because it's, it's not aggressive. It's boring. It's more of a momentum trade that might gradually go up. So sharp, aggressive levels is the first thing I'm looking for. And I'll be using some live examples here in a minute. I'll even be showing you some stocks that we're looking at for potential trades. Um, so the first, once we've seen the aggressive rally, the second thing is we then want to see, so how far did it drop? And then how far did it go back up before? So we want to see a nice big shot up to show that there was some real strength and commitment in that buying. It wasn't just short covering. And the final thing we then want to look at is we want to see uh, how many times it's hit. Now, I, I can't see the question, so, but, so I'll just ask you to answer this in your own, in your own mind. What's, what do we want to see? Do we want to see the stock has hit this more times in the past or less times? Now, if you answered more, then you'd be the same as a lot of people when they start out trading and the same as I was for the first four years of my career. It's actually less because the more times it's hit it, the more times it's been used up. Think of a coach playing football. If you throw a Hail Mary pass four times in a row, the other team's going to figure your game out and you're not going to probably do very well. Um, so we want to see it hit less times. And if we can get all three things happening, and ideally it's only happened once before, then this becomes our smart money buy zone. And we want to buy as close to that line as possible and write it up. So it, just a real basic example, if this was a chart you were looking at and you were given the decision of what we do you do next, I would argue that you would not buy it where it currently is because that's already hit once, twice before. It was also not a very powerful level. It only went up one versus, say, waiting for it to come back down to here and buying it there because that has only been hit once. It went up one, two, three levels, making it powerful, just slightly more powerful than, say, for example, waiting to short it up here because this only went down two. But that would be my second preference. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to move on because we've got a lot more cool stuff to chat about. But that's the basics. If everyone can understand that, that forms the, the foundation of every trade I'm looking at. Now, this might, this might change if you're looking at different patterns. 
uh, like a head and shoulders or a uh, uh, ascending triangle or things like that, the, the lines might change angles and that's where you start getting different strategies. But to start with, this is a very powerful one just looking at the horizontal zones. So here's your checklist. High probability zones is only where we want to trade. We don't take a trade just because. We don't take a trade because we're afraid that it won't go down to the high probability zone. That is an emotional decision. You don't have to buy the stock because you like it. You should buy the stock because it's the right price. So wait for the high probability zones. Strong levels of buying, fresh levels, powerful levels, and correlate with market and sectors. All right, here's an example. So Aaron's, this is a beauty for trading of these types of extremes, smart money zones. It's not a small company. It trades 30 million, sometimes up to 60 million dollars a day. Uh, if you have a look, this is a, a fairly recent chart. And uh, here it is, it comes all the way down, hits 24.50 in May, April of 2012 shot straight up in a matter of days. That's the kind of power that 70 to 80 percent of the market has. We come over, next time we hit, this is the kind of thing that days or even weeks in advance I would be putting in a buy order, that if a buy limit order, if it ever hits 2460, grab me some shares. My sell would have been below 2650 before we run into that first problem, which is the previous uh, support. There's a nice little trade, actually ended up going all the way up. Okay, now let's talk about this support, because you'll notice that we've actually got a very aggressive rally here. Again, thinking that this is on hundreds of millions of dollars, in a second just changes direction, goes up to 32 and goes straight back down again. So let's have a look at what happened next. The next, we couldn't have traded that, we might not have known that, but look what happens over here on the right hand side. Again, we hit this zone, 26.50 and we're straight up to 29.50. And again, in January of this year, the third time, we come and hit this zone. And where do we go? Straight up to the same target of 32, and then fail instantly all the way back down to 28.50. Now, if you, are, if you do not have targets in place, that would have been a very disappointing day because you would have bought it at maybe 27, and found it gone all the way up and all the way back down to 28.50. Trading with a target and understanding where these levels are would have allowed you to um, put this buy in weeks before it even got here. I, and I wouldn't. I, I would usually wait till a few days before it hits that zone so you can just make sure there's nothing terribly wrong with the stock. But uh, that allows you to kind of get precise exit points and entry points. So uh, again, we'll look at some live examples here in a moment, but um, uh, the next thing to finally then confirm is once we know that the stock is at a price where the smart money has shown its fingerprint before, and because it's shown its fingerprint once before, it's likely to happen again, then we increase that probability by looking for signs of overbought. So looking at like your Bollinger Bands. Is it outside your Bollinger Bands? If so, that's got a high probability of going back in or Re, uh, reversing. Is your RSI overbought, oversold? Look at your CCI. Uh, look at those types of things that are going to give you that, that really overstretched signal. And volume, of course, one of the key things. And finally, this is when you then increase the probability of the trade even further using price action, what I mentioned in that original slide. So. This is where, let's say, for example, we're looking at for a double top, okay? Let's say we're looking at Aaron's and that big double top that happened. What we then do is, let's say we're a swing trader and we're looking at daily charts. Now what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in, you know, like the Chinese doll. That's what time frames are. It's like a big Chinese doll. You open it up. It's the same thing, just smaller inside. So um, in time frames, if we're trading daily, swing trade, we look at this, but then we zoom into the hourly and say, what? pattern do we have on the hourly chart? And so ideally, if we're getting a double top and we have the choice of all these patterns, then we're wanting to see a rising wedge. It could be another, a number of different strategies, but of the choice of these four, this is what we want to see the hourly chart doing. Because this is a high probability breakdown 
and the horizontal line gives us the timing of when that will break down. Okay? Now, this is my secret tool. Uh, I mentioned to you that uh, you know tonight, today's all, all about market predictions. Now, this I haven't shared with, uh, it's not even something we teach in a lot of our courses. Um, one of the things that you may not know about, maybe you do know about it, but, but very few do, levels are not just based on price. The big boys, the market makers, they also decide based on time. And there's a term you, you may not have heard called open range. The two most important days to me of the month is the first day of the month and the third day of the month, uh, third Friday of the month, which of course is today because tomorrow uh, the market is closed. So options expiration day. Now why are these days important? Because these days, like I was telling you where the smart money has shown its hand, where it's bought before, the smart money will also, in terms of predicting new levels, will make key turning point decisions of where the market's going to get driven on the first day of the month and the third Friday of the month. So let me show you what I mean. Let's just pop over to the SPY. Okay, I'm just going to get, just going to wipe all this stuff. Let's start fresh. All right, so how valuable would it be to know with a high degree of probability where the turning point on an index would be? That's an obvious question. I won't ask you to answer it. The, um, but I'm arguing that there are, using these t two days, you can actually, to a high, high, very high degree of probability, predict where main, major market points, test points, will be. So let's, take, let's go back to uh, February, for example, I'll explain how this works. So this is the first day of February, this red candle here. February 3rd, Monday, February 3rd, first day of the month. Let's measure the range. The range is the high to the low. So what, the way we use this is we look at the chart and we say, uh, we say that basically this is the market makers saying, telling us where the key support and resistance is for that month. Now if we stay inside these lines for the next day, the next two days, we're in consolidation. We don't have a direction yet, but we do have a potential reversal. So if you were going, for example, uh, in the end of January, starting to say, wow, look at how much the market's dropped. It's now time to short. I would argue that's very risky because we're so close to the start of the month that we could have a major reversal. So we wait for that first day to happen and then see what, whether we break lower or whether we stay inside or whether we go higher. Now here we held support of the open range. We bounced. And then in fact, and this was a signal to potentially go long, if you're an aggressive trader, you see it held support and start buying. Start buying stocks in a smart money buy zone. If you're a little more conservative, you might have waited for it to rally up, broken resistance, and then off the market goes. And it, was, and it remained bullish for all of that month. Now let's fast forward then to the options expiration Friday, which is the 21st of February. And that brings us to here. The range was, let's go, there we go. There was the range on this particular day, right here, I'll just zoom in a bit, this candle here. Okay, so as we can see, the open range on that day was from here, 1845 to 1835. And what did the market do? It rallied up bounced off it, and so as soon as it broke through, right there on the 24th, the following Monday, that told you that the high probability trades and what the market should remain in is a bullish cycle until the beginning of the next month. And up we go, we remain bullish, nice action, all the way up, and then we hit the first day of March. You can see we then 
uh, then we get another open range here and you can see we then same bottom we go break higher remaining bullish for March and then we come into April I'll just um, there's April first day of April right here and what happened here is we faked out we held above it one two days came down and as soon as we broke that range that was going to tell us that we were going to be bearish uh, have a, a, major, a major bearish move and we dropped one two three rallied up tested the tested that open range from beneath and failed further so why is today so exciting well today is of course options expiration day as well so um, this is the time where in a week like this I'm winding up all of my trades I am now completely in cash um, and uh, what I'm looking for now is what the range today will be and more importantly where we go on Monday so so far we are we are entering into entering into a double top on the, uh, here on the chart we've also got a, a breakdown uh, excuse me a breakout of the downward channel which has been causing a lot of the oscillation in the index so we've got a breakout heading into resistance and we're going to set a range today that depending on whether we break higher lower or stay inside will give us the roadmap to how I'm going to trade for the next week uh, well next week and a half of course with about nine trading uh, eight trading days left in the month so this is it's going to be so interesting to actually follow through and see where that market's telling us uh, it's likely to go now go back and, and test this for yourself and go back months and months and months to see kind of the power of this but it works really really well in being able to predict um, levels that sometimes haven't even happened yet as opposed to trying to use old levels that you question the relevance of or maybe knowing how, where to measure them from so that is now the secret tool looking at the market is watching this range on Monday now there is there's one other thing that we can then look at to try and gain a bit of probability if we want to uh, get uh, you know some type of a, a better idea of, of what probability is whether the market will break higher in that range or below this is the final thing is where's the smart money going so as as we go into key resistance and support levels our final checkpoint is is now not to just simply look at smart money levels of where they bought and sold before but also look at what they're doing right now and for that I'm going to go back to the screen share and we're going to go into a um, indicator that I like to use We go we'll add the money flow twigs money flow this indicator is um, very very valuable because what it does is it actually analyzes um, evidence of how of, of what should be happening if smart money is truly buying now smart money like institutions insiders and of course the high frequency traders are they buying and holding is it a true uptrend or are we about to fail and so what uh, what this does is it looks at the is the price increasing along with increasing volume that sticks and does the stock or equity or index close in the top half of the range and if we get that this is the final checkpoint in, in my uh, how I set out my strategy if we get this you can see that we get a um, we're looking at this is a is an indicator and as if as, as the index rallies like it did here but you can see this indicator is actually making lower highs and lower lows this was also a key warning that this break was going to happen so what do we have now well what we have now is we have um, we have the market rallying up this going up as well but we haven't we made a new low but no new high so right now we're also kind of at a point of wait and see the one thing going for it is that we have in fact met almost an equal level on the smart money 
at a lower level on the index. So there could be a, a slight bullish sentiment to that indicator reading. Now, um, let's have a quick look at some stocks. We've got about 10 minutes left here. Um, let's have a quick look at some stocks that of how we apply this strategy now into trading. So um, let's look at the big boy himself. Let's look at Goldman Sachs. This was an easy smart money trade. Um, you have a look. I mean, these are, this is the, the biggest boy of them all. Look at that level. We're shooting down. We're dealing with 3 million shares a day at 155 bucks. We're talking about chump change. We hit this price and we go straight up. So where was the smart money trade? The smart money trade on, say, April 10th, putting a buy limit order in at $152.30, for example, because you don't want to look for the absolute, because, again, reverse engineer what your perfect chart would be. Your perfect chart on a double bottom would have a slightly higher, higher low. So we assume it is perfect. So we don't wait for the absolute bottom. We go for a little bit higher up. So we go, say, 152.30, 152.35. And then we look at our putting in a sell order. Where is the where did this rally last drive it up to? About there. So I would have been happy to sell at 159, which is support here, support here, resistance there, and you've got a nice little um, little eight dollar pop, or seven dollar pop, I should say. So if you take a five percent, thirty, forty, fifty percent on an option, depending on your execution price high probability, and your stop loss could have been right below this low of 151.33. So minimal risk, but high potential profitability. So there's Goldman. Um, what else? AEG is another one. Same thing. We're not just talking about double bottoms. We're talking about very aggressive smart money buy zones, straight down, straight up. Again, uh, we took about a million shares a day on this stock. Nice rally from 840 up to 880. Again, another little 5% pop. And that's, that's what I'm looking for on these types of trades. About 5% in, in oscillating markets when there's more direction, 10 to 12. And of course, if you want to leverage that, options are a great way to do it. Let's look at another one. Let's look at something a bit more complex, FBR. Now, this is interesting because this is where you can start getting more advanced trades. So those of you who uh, have dealt with more advanced patterns, you, know, you may spot that there is a head and shoulders here. So you want to look at what, why the past is relevant. We measure where that head and shoulders would take you to. Head and shoulders dictates that the, the price should bottom out an extension of the uh, head, which if you then draw a horizontal line on, is exactly where that smart money zone came in and bought it. So patterns predict where it's in at the bottom. It did bottom there at 10, rallied up. So again, a couple of days ago, you could have had a smart money buy zone in at $10.10. .10. And again, look, that's a 5% move in two days. These are, these are very predictable if you know exactly what you're looking for. Um, I could go over more and more. Um, one, I'm, one I've currently got an open order on, if AMD gets up to $4.45, I will short the hell out of it. Much like if it goes down to $3.10, I'll buy. What am I going to do in between? Nothing. It has to come to me. It has to be the perfect trade. Uh, and 90% of the time on 90% of the stocks, they're not worth trading. So you've got to pick your perfect points. Another one that we found today, this is actually one of our students found this, was uh, CLX. I know nothing about this company, but uh, CLX, Clorox, you know, that's coming to a uh, potential smart money sale zone, which, which coincides with the top of the upward channel that it's in. So now you've got two things going in its favor, possibly a rising wedge, and then you look at the money flow. And again, we see, ah, stock is rallying, but the money is going down, out. The smart money is using an arguably making an opportunity, using every rally as an opportunity to sell rather than using it as an opportunity to buy. 
Okay, so we've only got five minutes le left, so I'll, uh, I'll wrap things up, and sh uh, hopefully that gives you a really good idea. Oh, I've got to tell you about this one. This was one that we picked yesterday. Um, this was a flag formation, B-I-O-F. This is one of the ones that, again, if we had seen a breakout on this flag above 550, uh, it was a prediction we had that it would go to 8. I mean, that's, that's been a, uh, I think it was 35% move in just the last two days. Uh, one of the picks we sent out uh, yesterday. Um, so the smart money is very, very valuable. Uh, it applies to all patterns, and harnessing that is the key. Um, of course, the trick to really turning this stuff into a, uh, uh, into a powerful strategy is, is being able to find these opportunities. And um, so, as you can see, you know, this stuff is, works very well. Um, and, it's, and it's consistent because you're always looking for the same thing again and again and again. It allows you to be consistent by having by the opposite <laughs> type of scenarios. You can have no strategy, consistently changing variables, never knowing what you're doing right versus doing wrong as a result. It's stressful. Um, it's, uh, I'd argue it's not efficient. I mean, I can, I can do most of my work in less than an hour a day, and I trade four different strategies. If you pick one strategy and stick to it, you can probably do it for 20 minutes a night. And, and that's the idea of being efficiency. You may lose a couple percent a month because you're not seeing every opportunity, but you save so much time, and I would argue that extra couple percent is not worth the stress and the hours you put into it. For our, um, what's the next step? Is to start learning how to build these scans. Um, we are actually going into a period where oscillating and smart money buy and sell zones are very, very effective. Uh, this is um, people talk about going away, go sell in May and go away. Yeah, do that, and, and let your bracket orders and your targets and your scans do the work for you, so you can make money while you're away. Uh, there's no need to stop making money. Um, this is the workshop we're running. It's uh, it's t very timely because we've got such perfect market conditions for what we're teaching here in the workshop. It's uh, coming up not next Tuesday, but the Tuesday after. Uh, it's at 8, 8 p.m. Eastern or 5 Pacific, or depending where in the world you are. It is recorded, and we send it out. And if you uh, if you don't uh, if, uh, if you don't get a chance to attend, or if you just want to attend it again, uh, we actually d we do one of these uh, every six weeks. And if you uh, miss this one, you can attend live in the next one as well as getting the recording. Okay, it's um, it's basically. We're going to be going through showing you four different scans that scan for the smart money, uh, smart money buy targets. So we're going to be looking at how to anticipate changes instead of reacting to them, stuff we talked about today. We're going to be talking about um, uh, four different scans, scans that look for um, high probability option breakouts, where they're about to uh, report earnings the next day, where the smart money, where it's the smart money zone and the smart money is buying or shorting, depending if we're doing puts or calls. We'll be looking for uh, high probability scans to find things like the Goldman Sachs entry. Those are things that literally takes less than 10 seconds to click a button, and you get a list of about eight, nine stocks every day that are approaching a smart money buy or sell zone. Uh, and we have about five different indicators that go into that scan uh, that gets that for us. We, have, um, we will have the one that also combines a heavily shorted stocks. It looks for stocks that are heavily, heavily shorted, where insiders and institutions are buying, and it's coming to a smart money buy zone, and you, you can get huge rallies on that because of the short squeeze. Uh, and of course, a checklist so that at the end of this workshop, you can go away and actually not only just scan for them, but know how to everything you're looking for when you get that 10 stocks in front of you, how to pick the best one. It is limited to 100 people because of the. Um, we do have one-on-one -on -one support for all the people that are involved, uh, so don't leave it too long. But uh, it should be a really great event, and we really build on um, a practical plan and uh, and scans to use it that you can go away and start using immediately uh, in the uh, weeks and months uh, following. So I'll finish up there for today. Um, it's been uh, great. Thanks again to MTI for having us on. We really enjoy it, and I'll uh, pass along to the next speaker.